This video is sponsored by Wondrium. There'll be more on that later. Well, good morning, guys. Today is a special day at the off-grid. We're going to be doing our first overnight in the $7 cabin by were, as in our special guest, which he's not really more of a, he's more of a feature than a special guest. Don is going to be staying overnight in the cabin of his choosing. I think he chose the muffin cabin because it is close by. He's, uh, he's gone to get firewood actually, but uh, he's gonna be here. We're gonna button up some uh, details on the, on the $7 cabin in order to accommodate me. And uh, we're gonna spruce up the, uh, the muffin cabin just a little bit. It's a, it's a little messy from just, you know, in and out and whatnot. So they can make that all comfy cozy for Don and then uh, make this thing a little bit more habitable. And uh, yeah, we're gonna start getting it all rocking up and going. So let's, uh, let's get started. Let's get some firewood. Who are these people making you bring your own firewood? Whew. It's worth it. It's it's worth it. It'll be worth it. It was leg day yesterday, wasn't it? You played hockey last night, eh? That's right. First time in a while. There you go. Loosen up the old muscles there. Yeah. Kind of barking today. <laughs> Figure get some lighting in here. Got my EcoFlow, my EcoFlow Delta pack. Can't see the button. Need some light to turn the buttons on. Come on, camera. There I am. Okay. We got my lithium battery pack, EcoFlow Delta. Plug in my overhead light. Oh yeah, got to, got to turn the inverter on. There we go. Light. What's great about this pack is that it's got uh, it's got a lot of juice. It'll, it'll power the entire light. You just kind of plug it into the line bolts at his home, and then it's portable power when you need it, which is really cool. It'll be ideal for this kind of situation, and also. Uh, in a pinch, you can use it for cooking and uh, powering the TV. So, like, this is the luxury cabin for Don. Don, for his overnight, he's got his, you know, if he wants to stream YouTube, he can. And, uh, yeah, it'll be nice and cozy for him. Perfect size for him. There you go. Those are the fresh sticks, right? These ones? Yeah, they're nice and dry. They're, oh, yeah, they're and very they're... dry. Perfect fire starter. We've got a little above it. For a dustpan, just put it at the door. Sweep it out the door. Well, here, put the thresholds, right? That's you know what right. the threshold is? It's to hold the um, straw in there or That's something, right. isn't it? I think so. See, there's no threshold there, so it doesn't hold all the junk in. How convenient. Well, you got your smoke detector, it's sitting over there, so you should be good. All right, so we're all set in here. Ready for tonight? We'll button up the other cabin. Yep. Looks cozy. Down here. Is, that, is that your pillow slash duffel bag? Pillow slash duffel bag, sleeping bag, vest, nice. just in case. Extra socks. All the uh, all the essentials. Well, you don't want wet socks, right? That's no, like one that's of the right. important things to have is not wet socks when you're out in the bush. Well, it should be good. Okay, so the reason why we light a fire, especially when you first get to a cabin, is because the uh, the cabin itself has a lot of thermal mass and it's really cold because it's not doesn't stay heated all the time. So what you do is when you first get to your cabin is you light up the fire and you kind of store some heat. So it's gonna you know it's gonna warm the bed, it's gonna warm the floor, it's gonna warm your giant pile of wood you got sitting over there. It's gonna warm everything and all its surfaces, which makes for a com comfy space once it is warm. So that's, we're gonna just kind of periodically soak fire throughout the day in order to uh, get us up to the right comfortable temperature for sleeping. And then uh, after you've done stoking it, you kind of, you see it kind of peak and then decline overnight. And ideally you have enough thermal mass in order to get you into the morning where you just put more wood in and away you go. All right, so the task at hand is to try to get 
this cabin all set up and rocking for tonight. We've got a little bit of things to do. I think we need a kind of a surface to eat on. We need uh, we need a chair, some other stuff. We need a maybe a log holder, some decorations. We need some uh, we need some shelves. I don't think we need an area rug. I was thinking of making a sort of a hammocky type thing. What do you think we need in here, Don? Uh, definitely uh, uh, an eating surface, a table of some sort. Uh, you have a chair, maybe another chair. What about the crack in the door? Do you think? Uh, not go? really a big concern to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we gotta we gotta address that. I think cracks, but I think. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of like a tent. It's a tent and it needs a little it's bit of be, air. Yeah, it's going to be, well, yeah. It's going to be fresh, right? That's right, yeah. But yeah. you'll be warm, I'm sure. It's Well, your your cabin is a little bit more... Uh, Airtight. Think, yeah. Anyways, we'll see if we can button those guys up over there. We're going to light a fire just to get her going because it is a little chilly today. It's, it's, again, it's always kind of nice to have a fire going, especially when you're in the bush and you kind of need... To, once it's going, you can always kind of use it to cook and heat and whatnot. So that's what we're gonna do. In order to build our table, we used four legs from pallet wood and then we added a skirting board around the top and then we infilled it with more pallet wood for the top. And as it turns out, once we had the table built, we realized the table should only be about 20 inch, 28 inches tall. So we ended up actually cutting them afterwards, but uh, live and learn, right? Let you do the honors. too tall. <laughs> well, we, we did 34 inch legs plus half inch so it's 34 and a half counter. This would be a good kitchen counter but it's a little too tall for well, unless you want to just shovel you can shovel your food right in your face from here. Dining tables are 28 I believe. Right. 28 inch legs. Oh we gotta seat. cut the legs off. I think well we don't got no there's no top on our on our chair yet. Bar, it's it's comfort bar height. All right, we're gonna cut we're gonna cut the legs off a little bit. Gotta get the snow melt off our table first. Hey guys, if you're anything like me and you'd rather watch educational programming than, you know, the fluff you already see on the internet, and you kind of don't want to search for it, and you want it all in one place, like, I'd much rather watch something that teaches me how to do something. I was always that kid that, you know, read educational or instruction manuals. That, that was more interesting to me, because at the end of it, you would learn something new and you'd be able to apply it to your life. That's where my sponsor comes in today, Wondrium. It's the museum for your mind. It's got all of the programming that you could ever imagine that you'd want to see. Wondrium is a carefully curated collection of short and long form videos, tutorials, how-to, travelogues, and documentaries. What's best is it's thoroughly researched and presented by engaging experts that always keep it entertaining. One of the things I've been interested in lately is fine cabinetry building. What I found on Wondrium, if you go in the craftsy selection, it gives you a whole list of lessons on how to build fine cabinetry from door frames to the space frames to the little boxes and the drawer slides you know it's just mind blown on how easy it is to build a kitchen no need to like you know go out and 
buy one custom made. You can build it yourself. All you got to do is actually watch the videos, follow along the instructions, and you can build your own. That's pretty cool. If you've ever wondered about anything, Wondrium is going to be your new favorite place. And they're offering a free trial to my viewers. Show your support for my channel by subscribing to Wondrium now. Your brain's going to love this place. Visit wondrium.com slash modern self-reliance or click the link in the description to start your free trial today. So we got a little bit of a project to do. The um, back when they used to build log cabins, there was an old technique and it involved felling trees or not necessarily felling them, but stripping the bark off of them after the full moon in January. And what you do is you actually take an ax or a draw knife or something like that and you actually strip the bark out of chunks out of trees. And what it does is it forces yeah, so yeah, so it forces the sapwood into the heartwood and it makes it like a, a log that lasts for a really long time. So what I'm trying to do now is select a tree that I effectively want to kill. But what I'm going to do is is cuz I have a project in the summertime that I want to use the tree for. So I'm, what I'm looking for is a tree that isn't optimal quality. Maybe near the top of it it splits into two. Like Don's pointing to one right over there. You can see, you can see over there, there's a couple, they split into two, probably about 20 feet up. And those kind of trees are, they're, what happens to them is that if they get a kind of rain on them or if ice on them, they tend to shear off and then they die anyway. So they're not ideal. So the, the again, the idea behind this forest is that it's supposed to be thinned. So once all the dead trees are gone, my plan is to go in and thin out the live stuff. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick a couple. What do you think of that one, Don? My plan is to get a beam probably about 16 feet long. So this guy here, this guy right here, as you can see, it's got a co-leader at the top. So I think that one's ideal. I'd be able to cut a whole bunch of stuff out of that. So, so again, just to summarize. So what happens is the sapwood will work its way into the heartwood if you cause the tree stress. So the idea is to do it when the sap is at its lowest, so the coldest point of the winter time, which is again, the first full moon in January. And ideally, I think, I think it, it makes it lighter because it kind of dies in place, dies standing. We're gonna strip this guy off and then uh, you guys can wait, you guys can tune in. If you guys, if you guys wanna subscribe, you guys can actually see this tree in the summertime being taken down and being made into something useful. Okay, so original plan was to do two trees and then I saw one that was kind of, looks like it was struggling, it looks like it was on the way out. So we ringed the entire thing just around the thing. And, and you know what was fascinating it was that the one that we ringed along the base has a definitive like a, a definite different smell. It's almost like it's sending pine sap up the tree to kind of heal itself. This thing you could you could you could almost hang this thing in your car and it's already a, like a smelly pine tree. It smells you don't eat that. Doesn't taste very good. It smells delicious though. You wanna hang that in your truck, Don? No, I'm good. Don's like, no, I'm good. Good. He's probably got enough in his hat to to make his truck smell like pine tree anyways. It's good stuff. Anyways, so we've got our two trees scarred. And what that's gonna do is allow the sapwood to work itself into the inner heartwood, creating what the Norwegians like to call amber wood. And I guess they built old churches and stuff with the wood. So the, the technique is to actually take the tree and allow it four seasons of repair. So. I thought you could cut them down in the summertime and you'd be good to go, but it turns out we're supposed to fell these trees next January. So maybe a different technique. I was originally planning on using these things for beams for the sawmill shed, but uh, I might have to do use another solution for that problem. But uh, these guys are ready, they're prepped. 365 days from now, you guys can tune in and we can chop these guys down. We can see what it looks like on the amber wood.
we're just getting dinner sorted. Uh, we got uh, we got losing light because we're too busy doing other things. We didn't uh, we didn't start our outside fire to get our uh, cool bed established because we want to grill some sausages, some homegrown pork sausages. You excited for sausages? Right now. That's right. You think I can eat my arm? Yeah. <laughs> I've been starving Don all day. So uh, yeah. So that's our plan is to have some sausages. How many times can I say sausages? Anyways, so we got the mmm grill set up and uh, what's cool about that is it's adjustable up and down so you can adjust your temperature. So I think uh, I think we're just about ready to just kind of move the logs out of the way and cook with the coals. I'm just huffing smoke over there, but uh, as you can see, light is fading. Uh, we kind of want to get these things cooked before it gets too dark. We've probably got about a half an hour, half an hour light left, I think. Uh, roughly, yeah. Yeah, about a half an hour light left. But it is, it feels like it's getting warmer for some reason. Isn't it? I think so, yeah. yeah. Well, they're yeah. talking that it's supposed to be uh, above freezing tomorrow, so. Which is an ideal night to sleep outside in the winter time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're in for not an extremely cold night like we've been having, we've been experiencing. We're, we're going to get a moderate night, which is uh, it's good for a test. We get to see, to see how well this works. Let's get the, uh, I get the sausages on and, uh, Get them started anyways. Look at that size of that sausage. Got dinner. Look at that. Feast. Fit for a king. I don't think our buns are big enough for those sausages. Try to put my party mix away. I think we're too far in the in the ceiling. How do we do move? Wanna, do you want to move it out a bit? Yeah. Okay. The whole table's gonna collapse. There, that's better. I think you're on. Yeah. There we go. Well, that's much better. Are we still out? Can we still see us? Yep. We still in there? Napkin. This is possibly we a shop towel knock napkin. This is possibly the best dinner I've ever had in the bush. So I'm a pretty simple guy. I normally just have a sausage with like sweet baby rays. I'm I'm gonna pass. I did all that corn for you. Oh, you don't have good. to you don't have to eat it all. It gets all stuck in my teeth. I don't know. I just can't. I can't uh, do it. I can't deal with it. What would you need? I get you a, a bowl for me just to, yep. uh, to put some of this aside for, for the moment. Yeah, you can eat your corn later. Or you can feed the squirrels or something. Maybe bunnies like corn. It's important bun to sausage ratio. So like with this guy here, you got, boy, there, perfect sausage to bun ratio. Here you go. Here's your knife. The reason why that sausage is so long is because we actually butchered that pig ourselves and when we stuffed our sausage casing, the actual sausage casing was about uh, three feet long in a big old swirl. So you basically cut it the length that you want it. It's just easier that way. So there's like four sausage, four regular sized sausages in that pile. Bon's gonna impart us some wisdom. I don't know, maybe something like that. Maybe he's got, he's got a full stomach. Because before you said it was just too darn cold to impart any wisdom. Now you're warm and fed. It's like nap time or something. Yeah, it's <laughs> too tired. <laughs> too tired. <laughs> too tired. I'm not, I'm not some wise old sage who has fountains of information and wisdom. Don has all the knowledge. He's just holding it back. Do you want some sausage? Look at, look at how look at how well cooked <clears throat> that is. It is uh, delicious. It is delicious. I, I I opt for sweet baby rays. You guys may have seen the cameo in the in the uh, when we did the A-frame build. It was sitting on the uh, by the lamp, and the reason why it was there is because uh, Zuckerberg. You might know that guy. He uh, 
on her Facebook and he was doing a keynote speech and you could actually see it in his living room sitting on one of the shelves and I thought that's hilarious. So I, I did an homage to Zuckerberg with the Sweet Baby Rays on the thing and a lot of people commented that it was there but they didn't quite know where it was from. But if you watch Zuckerberg's keynote speech you can actually see it there. So that's that's why I did it. He's got good taste in, in, in barbecue sauce, what can I say? Did you know that's why it was there? Because you told me. Oh, okay. But I, I would yeah, have never... You didn't watch the keynote speech? No, I did not. This was when he was changing the name to... Yeah, something to something else. Don tried that uh, trees need butter maple on his, on his corn and it was uh, a little too overpowering for that sort of thing. It's very good, but it's... Uh, yeah. There's no corn taste left. So. <laughs> if you don't like corn, put that, That's put that right on there. there. You're probably good on any vegetable. Yeah. I'm not a vegetable guy. I don't know if you guys know that. I eat vegetables. I'm, I'm, a, I'm limited to a broccoli. I like broccoli. Like steamed broccoli. Raw broccoli. I like cold carrots. I don't like cooked carrots. Cauliflower? I'm a, I eat cauliflower. Actually, you know what? Um, Buttered? Yeah, like uh, Parmesan, cauliflower. Actually, uh, the wife did it in the uh, air fryer. It was like eating, um, like it felt like eating chicken nuggets or something. Like it was, it was interesting. So if you're like vegan and you want to try that sort of thing, you go cauliflower with Parmesan. Like you can't eat Parmesan. Is Parmesan not vegan? There's, there may be uh, a version of uh, Parmesan that's vegan. Yeah, go vegan Parmesan with cauliflower and the air fryer tastes like a chicken nugget. I, I'm not kidding. It's delicious. Well done. That was pretty delicious dinner. I don't know what yep. you think. I'm stuffed. Was it good? It, it was excellent. It's I'm like, uh, stuffed and yeah, ready. quite quite content right now. Are you ready for sleep time almost? Yeah, it's it's getting very close. It's it's like it's like six thirty at night and it's getting close because when you're in the forest, it seems as soon as it goes dark, it just gets yeah, just get tired. Well, we've been outside all day too. It's true. So. It's like Coach's Corners. Right? Like we're in the third, is this the third period? The second? This is, well, the end of the second? I'm almost going into overtime. You're so. almost going overtime. Yeah. All right. So anyways. So we're going to, a little bit of uh, uh, coolness. I don't know. It's interesting. I think, I think it's interesting. So I'm going to share it with you. Is uh, there was a fellow YouTuber by the name of Bloodstained Wings. And she made this painting for me. You, you guys can see that. That's pretty neat. It's uh it's a painting of the uh, the A-frame cabin. So she uh, she has a YouTube channel, and she kind of it's like Bob Ross's painting. She 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 found inspiration from the uh, the A-frame cabin, and she decided to paint it, which is really cool. And then she reached out to me and said, "Can I send it to you?" And I said, "Absolutely, send it to me." Um, she doesn't know I'm featuring this on her on on my channel, so who knows? She might watch it. She might not. But uh, anyways, yeah. So you can actually see, and uh, look, you can you can see. I don't know if you can you can see see that. You can see her painting the entire thing, which is really cool. So she goes and she narrates it and kind of neat. So I'll put a link in the description below to, for this video. If you guys want to see this being painted, it's kind of cool. And uh, it's going to find a home in one of these cabins or maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's going to, I don't know. We're going to do something with it, whether it goes home with Dawn or if it goes on my wall at home. I don't know. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, it is very nice. Very well done. So I had a comment in my last overnight. It was, they were talking about why have a campfire outside when you have a fire indoors. Well, why not have a campfire outdoors? It's like, it's the middle of winter. It's warm. Yeah. No. You guys, if you've never, if they've never, if you've never experienced this, you've got to try it at one point is to have a campfire in the woods at night. There's a thing, it's a thing. You should do it. It's like having a bonfire in the summer, right? That's you right. don't need heat, but that's it's just uh, something that's very soothing and. I think it's it's primitive. It's like that's it's right, yeah. it's like it brings you right back to like the roots, binging it like at all, sitting behind around the campfire telling stories. There's something mesmerizing to a fire. I made a special I made a special plaque for Dawn, and uh, so you guys may have seen these before. These are the YouTube play buttons. And I made a special one for Dawn. This is made of ashwood and laser cut on the laser etcher, which it uh, it says, you know, congratulations, Modern Self Reliance for fitting 250,000 subscribers. They don't have a 250,000 subscriber button, but I made one. So this is this is for Dawn. Dawn is an integral part of the channel, 
and uh, well, you should have a plaque too. So this is your plaque, Don. And if it if you're ever cold at night, it doubles as firewood. <laughs> yeah, which is really good. Cool. There you go. Well, that's very nice. Thank you very much. That's uh, I'm not sure I deserve that, but um, you deserve every bit of that. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, thank you very much. And I guess uh, thank you to all the uh, subscribers and viewers too, because um, they're major part of it right well they're, so, they're the reason why you got we got exactly to so, like um, if, if it wasn't for you there would be no number at all yeah right? so that's uh great thank you everyone not many people have those no actually in fact, i, I imagine not any. no nobody has that yeah so this is will be uh, one of a kind that is one it is definitely one of a kind that's <laughs> great that's great i will uh put it on my uh put it on my shelf with pride there you go so there's been a question don out there that i've been i've been reading you don't read do you read the comments at all uh, no, not no, no, no. It's not in the comments. Right? <clears throat> there was a question that came in, and it was, uh, "Which is your favorite cabin to work on? Like, what was, like, of all the cabins we've ever made, what was the most favorite one you've helped with?" Wow, that's like asking who, what, uh, what's your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> well, which um, is your favorite child? <laughs> they don't have feelings. Um, I think the uh, the uh, the log cabin slash sugar shack lean to was probably the favorite. Is it, really? Why did you like that one so much? Uh, I think it was because the the way we did the logs, the uh, button pass right. method. I, I'd never seen that done before, nor had I obviously done it before. So um, well, there's a lot of people that dislike our method of doing it that way. Yeah. But I mean, it's been a proven method, has it not? It has been. It's well, it's 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 a method. I, I, like, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of people that said it's not going to last very long, yeah. which I, I I beg to differ. I think it's it's this is as good as the day we built it. I was just down there today, actually. It. Um, I th I think maybe because of the uh, length of time it took too. I think you, it. it um, Stockholm syndrome sort of thing. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, you put a lot of time into it, so you... Uh, it was a lot of time. So you, it becomes... Uh, it doesn't become a curse, it becomes uh, a pet project, so... Yeah. You just like the heavy lifting. It was, the, it was the, the fact that we had to lift a gajillion log. And it went through almost every season, so... That's true. We, we at did, least we did winter, spring, and summer, anyway. That's right. We started... Yeah, we started... We started about this time last year. That's actually. right, yeah. Yeah, we started that log cabin about this time last year, and uh, like I fin we finished the shorts and t-shirt weather. That's right, because we were we were doing the uh, the uh, the chinking, and I know it was mosquito weather. So yeah, well the mosquitoes weren't that bad. No, surprisingly enough, but I know that there was some. Yeah. So this uh, this last past summer, actually, the mosquitoes have been surprisingly surprisingly mild. The fire's getting hot. I feel like. Are we melting the camera yet? <laughs> I don't see anything dripping, so that's probably a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I... What was your second favorite? Uh, the second favorite would be probably... Um, I really enjoyed the A-frame with the... Uh, with the... Uh, the glass. Uh, And maybe the sauna. I guess the sauna was uh, unique, so it was. Uh... So we're, we're we're pretty much every cabin. Which one? <laughs> which one was your least favorite? The least favorite. Yeah, your least favorite. Your one that was like, ah, oh, what are we doing? Well, I think maybe uh, doing the cube because I had a really bad shoulder at the time. Oh right. So um, that was probably my least favorite, just because it brought back painful memories. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's very it's probably the nicest finished one. Yeah, it's um, got the most homey, well, residential homey feel yeah. to it. I think the log cabin by far has the most rustic. Well, but it's cozy. Yeah. It's got like the feng shui is all. It's it's got the right it's got the right everything, the right size, scale, sort of thing. So I, I think the log cabin for that. Like, yeah. like the cube, the cube is like if you want you know, home away from home with all the amenities and the proper, you know, everything, insulation and whatnot, that the cube is way to go. Yeah, and I mean, it's, I, I, I realized that it was, uh, 
it's much more finished in a residential style, but um, as I said, it's just got, uh, at the time, it wasn't very pleasant to work on for myself, so. You didn't show it on camera. You're working through the injury, you didn't show it on camera. I don't, I don't remember. Do you remember? Well, I, I remember, you, you I remember, remember vividly, I don't yeah, remember. I remember climbing the stairs, or climbing the ladder, and um, it being very painful, so. Mm. Well, well. And it, not so, well, maybe not so painful, awkward. Yeah. Awkward would be the better word. So. Working through an injury, it's kind of like those injuries that kind of accumulate as you get older. That's right, yeah. And the mosquitoes were really bad that year, too. Do you remember them? They were, because it wasn't even... That's two summers ago. That thing, that yeah. the cube's been through. This will be the second winter the cube's gone through. That'd be uh, just uh, interesting for you to take your camera and just uh, do kind of a walk through and and uh, see how well it stood up. Well, I know, I know it. Uh, yeah, they, there has been there has been questions whether or not that thing is going to withstand the test of time, and uh, it's it's actually it's been so far so good. Another question on the channel was. Uh, um, maybe build a, a cabin that Don would like to build. I'm like, well, I was kind of answering in my own head, right? Like, Don likes building all the cabins. Why, why does he, like, is there a cabin that you want to build in the future that you're, you be, might, might be interested in building? What's, uh, what's the future like? What, what are we building next? Well, that's a good question. I don't know, like, uh, <clears throat> like you said, I've uh, enjoyed building all the cabins. Um, I guess the only, uh, I guess there's only two things that we can go up. Yeah. Or so like, how about like, we, a, like, uh, a, like something in the sky, like in a, the sky, up in a, like a tree fort a or tree, something. Tree, a tree house or, or something like that. Okay. Or, or how about uh, while well, we go underground? Ooh. Like a bunker. A bunker, a mine. <laughs> we, we start mining. We could. we could start start mining something or um, yeah, just. Uh, I like that gold rush show. Do they go underground? Well, they dig a big hole. Yeah, so we could dig a big hole. Dig a big hole, maybe like an, so maybe these guys don't, when a Chris, tunnel? A tunnel. that'd be kind of cool. Like a, some sort of, like a, a tunnel connecting another structure together. Maybe like a tunnel from the main cabin to the root cellar. That would be kind of cool. That would be, yeah. And it'd be functional too. That's right. You can just kind of tunnel out of the cabin into the root cellar. Yeah. Get your preserves and away you go. Get a bottle of jam and maple syrup. And maple syrup, yeah. Yeah, it'd be worthwhile, right? Yeah. Yeah, just to. No, something like that would be uh, interesting. So, you may not know this, Don, but uh, my brother and I, Chris from the Wooded Beardsman's channel, he, we used to, as children, dig underground forts quite often. I think once a summer we would dig some sort of underground fort. We would. Usually it would involve, you know, digging, it, would, it always involved digging a giant hole and then covering the top of it with something that was not dirt because the, the dirt around here isn't ideal tunneling dirt because it's mostly clay and if you've ever dug in clay, if you get a big enough hole, the sides tend to collapse and it's a lot of weight because there's a lot of water in it. So usually you put like some sort of a wooden roof or, or some other kind of thing, but your, your three sides or four sides were covered with dirt, you just, your roof was wood or something. So. Maybe we could do something like that, like an underground thermal mass, like a something like a. Got to use some words. Something. Use a what's that? A, a bunker. <laughs> no, we use that, didn't we? We use that term, bunker. <clears throat> no, bunker? I'm thinking for the fireplace, for the heat source. We got. Um, what do they call them? Like this is underground. Yeah. Like uh, it's like a thermal mass stove it's like built in the dirt why can't i think of the word i'm afraid I'm you don't you don't know <laughs> what it is it's uh i'm no help at all here we'll have to google it somebody will tell me anyways you know those those thermal mass stoves they got the pipes snake through clay and dirt and then once you heat them up they get they stay like hot geo really. it's not like it, well it's not really geo it wouldn't be a geothermal thing it would be like a it's a mass oven or something like that. I can't even, I can't remember that. Anyways, you guys can figure that out. I, I could probably Google it, but I can't right now. I'm not gonna Google it right now, but it's uh, one of those incorporated into the underground build, some sort of 
efficient heating source not like a like a rocket stove sort of thing but a homemade fireplace that's once you once you get it warm she stays warm for a long time thermal mass so the other day Don and I went on a firewood collection tour there's a video that uh, that didn't do so well I guess you guys aren't that interested in firewood but uh, I like firewood Don likes firewood he heats his home with firewood and uh, so anyways he got two truckloads of, of firewood and I actually stopped by his home and uh, you ended up getting how much wood? Uh, it was pretty much, I think what we said in the video would be pretty much two face cords. Right. Uh, it's all split and piled now, so it, it, um, it could be two face cords, maybe slightly more, slightly less, but... Uh, that was a significant, so I, I showed up thinking I was gonna help him, and by the time I showed up, it was uh, all split and piled. <laughs> But, so it was, I, but uh, I did bring coffee. That's right, and it was uh, I enjoyed the coffee. It was, <laughs> um, but it was it was the easy. Um, I think one day I um, it took me one afternoon in the morning probably. It was um, probably in the minus twenty degrees Celsius when I was splitting it, so it was just it was just almost blowing apart. Yeah, it was, so it was, it was frozen. It, it is really easy to split fresh wood when it's got water in it, and uh, it just blows apart like I said but we did we did save you the easy stuff to split well it was good it was good uh, easy stuff to split and it wasn't um, it wasn't all that overly big yeah. I guess the probably the biggest stuff was maybe some of it maybe 12 inches in diameter yeah or so you split so, it four times four yeah. pieces five pieces so and it was pretty straight it was uh, pretty easy splitting and like I said it was a uh, beautiful time to do it in the uh, minus 20s and and it was bright and sunny so it was just uh it was a pleasure actually to, do, to work perfect in that. perfect splitting perfect scene. perfect conditions so i've i've managed to cut everything up i've bucked it up into splitting size pieces i uh i usually split in the springtime usually like when you can wear like no jacket just a sweater um i have a hydraulic splitter so i'm not uh, i'm not exerting myself that hard I got a bad shoulder or bad out my my elbows my elbow hates me when I split wood so I that's I've I can't split wood anymore so I think I don't know I'm just defective that way but there's technology for that we get to use a splitter use all the toys right there's a lot of noise in the bush <laughs> <laughs> it's creepy isn't it yeah you can hear crap. let's not tell any ghost stories Right, Don, you're all set. I'm you all got, set. You've got it's nice and warm in here. I may have to put some more wood in later on. But you got some uh, fire. You got firewood. You got a nice got little lots stack. Of, lots of stack or did, lots of firewood here. Did you want me to set you up on the TV? Did you want to watch? I can set you up if you want to watch. No, TV. I think it's uh, it's going to be uh, pretty quickly uh, shut eye time. So. All right. Well, I will. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. There's okay, a. Have a good night. We got the uh, the smoke detector is right here. So if it decides to uh, yeah. scream at you, um, something's gone wrong. But uh, it should be good. I've slept in here before. Yeah, should be good. Well, I'm perfectly comfortable. All right, so. and then you got your heating blanket if you for some reason that, it's or the electric blanket if uh, for some reason I need it. Yep. Good. Okay. Where are we at? Where are we at for percentage? Percentage. Eighty nine. Eighty nine percent. That's pretty good. That'll last you all night. So just oh, yeah. shut that down and you're good to go. All right. Do. See okay, you good night.
Well, we got the fire all loaded for the night. We've got a, enough blocks in there to get us probably at least halfway through the night, at least four or five hours. I might have to load it mid, midway through the night, but I got some firewood close by. I just toss it back on, go back to bed. Might be warm enough. We'll give it a whirl. It's not that cold out tonight, which is nice. It's only going to down to like a minus three or four degrees Celsius. So it shouldn't be that bad. My sleeping bag should be adequate. And uh, when it's cold like this, I, there's no pajamas. You know, you put, tuck yourself in your hood and you curl up into a ball and uh, you know, nice and toasty in your little cocoon. Anyways, I will uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. How's that for ambiance? So we got the crackling fire over here. It's actually quite, quite peaceful. Sounds kind of like a, well, it sounds like an open hearth. That's what that sounds like. It's got that sparkling, crackling. Well, good morning. That was something. Can't see my breath in here. That's uh, I'd call that a success. It's, it's uh, it's not exactly warm in here. It's not exactly cold. It's kind of in between. I can't see my breath, so it's above freezing. I had to uh, stoke the fire kind of late at night because it completely went out and it started dropping, and I was afraid I was gonna freeze this this is a pretty good sleeping bag but it did get cooler so anyways it's uh there's still stuff melting on the roof it's crazy. but it did it did manage to maintain warmth it is a hot tent essentially because we got uh got the wood stove in here so it is it is a hot tent so i think it worked out pretty good i wonder how i wonder how don fared he uh he's probably just sitting there reading a book or something like that it's I could tend to sleep in a little bit later. That's why it kind of, it's pretty darn bright. It's, it stays really bright in here because of the white mashy stuff. I have my hood on and tucking myself in. Don's probably already got his fire going and he's probably already, he's probably like two cups of coffee in, let's do this. It should be pretty warm when we get back. I just gotta go grab Don and uh, I think we're gonna make coffees. I don't know, depends on what he wants. I got some breakfast, maybe just a coffee. I don't know, we'll see. Good morning. <laughs> Looks like you've been up for a while. Uh, yeah, a little while. I've stoked the fire a couple times through the night. It's like, it's crazy hot in here. I know. It was very comfortable. Didn't need the electric blanket at all or the, uh, the Snuggie. The Snuggie? Well, it looks like... Uh... And I just got... Uh, too many clothes on actually to be it's like a sweat lodge just, in here yeah what did you do? <laughs> it's, so it's very uh this very thing warm. this thing's maintained temperature a lot better than lion cabin i think like, you don't have quite as you have a few more uh drafts i would think well it's yeah it's mostly tarp right so yeah. no it looks like uh wow yeah. it's warm in here My gloves how long have you been up for i'm not really sure enough time to like i said stoke the fire and crazy use the uh, great outdoors and oh yeah Did you go for a walk uh kind of oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right well let's uh 
I got everything else in the other cabin, so let's. Uh, is it warm in there? It's well, it's kind of warm. Bring a jacket. Yeah. We got uh, we got coffee. We're gonna make some coffee over there. I'll grab my uh, hoodie. And... Oh, it's way it's way nicer in this cabin than it is in that cabin. It's not bad in here, right? No, but I have a couple more layers. Yeah, it's a little yeah. it's a little fresher in here. Yeah, it, actually, it isn't too too bad. Like I got like it's also got like a pretty pretty good ferno going on there. This there is this one's a little less efficient as the other one. It's got just a giant wow. fireplace. Is this cheating, Don? Are, are we cheating here? We're not. Okay, I just turned the turned the power on. <laughs> is this cheating making coffee with a battery in the morning than like putting it on the fire? I don't know. Is that cheating? Is it frozen? <laughs> yeah. Where, where'd you find that? Right here. No, it was, yeah. It's like it's like when you go like play in a hockey tournament and they don't give you like back in the day when I was a kid you you'd play in a hockey tournament and they wouldn't give you fridges in your hotel room so you'd put your all your stuff up against the window and it would uh, it would freeze overnight. <laughs> 100 degrees, yeah, 100 degrees. We don't want 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We had 211 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. And we got the EcoFlow pack boiling our water with our kettle for our French press. Now that, my friend, is glamping. We're not roughing it. Somewhat. Somewhat roughing it? Yeah, Somewhat we're roughing it. The only thing that we're roughing is our combinations. All the other technology is, uh, is where it's at. So we're gonna let that boil. We're at nine degrees already fancy coffee <laughs> see the name of that look, look, there you go nightmare hippie girl <laughs> a whimsical tragical beauty self-conscious and a little bit moody that's coffee for you the uh it got dropped off to me to try roasted on january 18 2022 it's fresh it's fresh. Are you excited for that? Here, take a take a whiff of that. Whiff. It smells really good. It's Is it very, moody? Very light though. Look at the uh, oh, yeah. the texture or not the texture but the color. The ground. You can see you can see our color. It's a very it's not dark. We're at 46 Celsius already. Steep. Trees need butter maple. Born in Brooklyn, New York. Some flavor. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Here, I'll get you. I'll get you a clean spoon. <laughs> yeah, that is that is really good. There'll be there'll be a link in, in there'll be a link for that in the description if you guys want to wow. check that stuff out. That stuff's something, eh? Yeah. I already put a bit in my coffee. All of the flavor. Is it good? Lava? Uh, it's it's good. It's um, a little moody, self-conscious. <laughs> No, it is very good coffee. You can tell it's freshly roasted too, because it uh, doesn't have that bitter aftertaste. That's true. Maybe it's the maple syrup. Well, well it could that. be too, because I did add a bit to it. So the story behind that uh, that coffee grounds is my um, my real estate agent dropped by, and I don't know if that's a new thing for real estate agents to drop by your house and um, gift you stuff, but that's. I think that's awesome. I, I think it's a great marketing tool for them to just kind of like, just poke you. Just be like, oh, you want to move again? I don't know. She's she's a very kind lady. She dropped off some fresh ground coffee, which was delicious. And some uh, Yeti mugs, which I didn't bring them, but uh, these ones work just as well. 
That coffee's delicious, actually. I gotta find out where exactly she got that from so I can get some more. This is definitely the hot seat over here. Yeah, and you definitely did a good job of uh, getting that fire going again because it's it's warming up here quite nicely. Isn't it crazy? It's crazy. Well, it's, it's a huge fireplace, right? So it's still got a little hint of a, like old basement smell. Yeah, no, I can. All I can smell now is coffee and. I just want to take it. Like we should just put this in shot glasses and drink it. It's good. The goodness of vegan butter. It's got vegan butter in here. What? Combining sweet, rich, organic maple syrup from the best sugar makers in the U.S. with the salty goodness of vegan butter flavor. Our trees needs butter. Maple is here to add decadence to your dishes because of a buttery taste always makes meals better. It's true. Trees knees butter. Maple is great on anything. From seared pork chops, because that makes it vegan, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to drizzled over yeah. fresh popped popcorn to classic French toast. Or coffee. It's it's, it's really great, great in it's coffee. Great. Well, we sat here for what seems like a too long of a time enjoying our coffee because it's uh it's very <laughs> it's very nice and warm in here. It's almost like you gotta sleep again. It's that warm in here now. Fires from rock. And we got the door half cracked. That's how yeah. warm it is in here. Um but anyways, yeah, we got our coffee pretty much finished up we're almost ready to start the day so uh anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh join me in the next one you guys say bye don see ya bye <laughs>